The chassis view feature in Cisco EPN Manager provides an interactive visual representation of optical devices, their internal components and their physical connections. By using the chassis view feature, you can configure optical devices or make device configuration changes, reducing the need to use additional management tools. This video introduces you to the types of configuration settings that you can add or change as needed to integrate and manage optical devices in EPN Manager. Note that the chassis view layout varies based on the optical device type. In this case, we are using a Cisco NCS 2000 series optical device after its initial installation, which provides a good overview of the types of device management tasks that you can perform. The tasks that you can perform also depend on your user permissions on the device. On the Network Devices page, you can open the chassis view by clicking the device name link. To use the chassis view feature to see or manage an optical device, Device discovery in EPN Manager must be complete, and the system must be managing the device. The system opens a detailed device page with a chassis view tab active. The chassis explorer and the alarms tab are open by default. To see the device representation and connections, you can close the chassis explorer. You can add or change configuration settings on the configuration tab the tab includes sections to address the following categories of settings general to identify the device name physical location location time mode and default configuration network to configure ipv6 and sox proxy protocols security to manage optical device user access Internal patch cords to manage physical or logical connections between ports. GMPLS, WSUN to define optical fiber cable attributes and alien wavelength parameters. Let's take a closer look. Under General, you can identify the device by name. When the device has been named before the system discovers it, the system populates the name field automatically. Under Location, you can add the coordinates of the device's physical location and include an optional location description, which will appear at the device level on the Cisco Transport Controller or CTC tool. Also, note that adding the latitude and longitude enables EPN Manager to position the device on topology maps automatically. Under Time, you can configure the system time to which the device will synchronize. You can use a network time protocol or NTP server and also assign a backup server in case of a primary server failure. You also can configure the device date and time manually and indicate the device time zone and whether to apply daylight saving time. Note that when you are using an NTP server, the system calculates the time relationship among these settings to reflect accurate device time. The Node Shared Risk Link Groups or SRLGs section is populated by the device and is read only. The unique SRLG field indicates the sequence of distinct numbers that are assigned to different resources supporting the device when it shares resources with other devices. When these numbers are sequenced to form the SRLG tag, the tag uniquely identifies the device in the system. To minimize failure risk when users configure network paths for the device's traffic, the system references the SRLG tag to ensure that it configures primary or secondary network paths using different resources. The additional SRLG field lists any subsequent unique identifiers that system users have provisioned on devices that share physical resources. This way, the system will not use duplicate resources when configuring primary or secondary network paths. Under System Mode, you can toggle the System Mode to NC for Sonnet or at C for SDH. You also can enable manual cooling 
which turns the rack shelf fans to their maximum speeds. System users most often enable manual cooling when testing whether the fans are working as expected. In the case of catastrophic failures that require the complete device configuration to be erased, you can reset the device to its factory defaults. Use caution when taking this action. When you do need to reset the device configuration, we recommend that you back up and archive the device's current running configuration. The read-only system description field indicates the operating system and software image on the device. To download the settings that you have configured to the device, click Apply. This action also causes the device to synchronize with the EPN Manager inventory automatically. Note that you can return the settings to those that were configured before you made changes, if needed. In the Network section, you can configure the IPv6 and SOX proxy protocols. This section lists the device's IP management address and mask details. To edit protocols, select the row and then click the Edit button. The Edit Network General Settings dialog box indicates read only device details that the system collected during device discovery. To indicate the default gateway in the Default Router field, type the router IP address. You can control the actions that a user can take when using the Liquid Crystal Display on the device. Enable support for IPv6 addresses, which also enables connectivity to a SOX Internet Protocol proxy server automatically. Allow the device to forward the DHCP requests that it receives, which allows the requesting device to obtain a temporary IP address from an external DHCP server and indicate the DHCP server's IP address. If the device uses a SOX proxy server, the system assigns a default port and when you select a proxy type, it is important to note that the SOX proxy type affects the way clients and the optical device communicate with each other on the TCP IP set of protocol layers or stack. Use caution when changing the SOX proxy type which might prevent a client from communicating properly with the device. For more information, refer to the job aid. You can download the settings and synchronize the device, or return the settings to those that were configured before you made changes, as with the general settings. Under Security, on the Users tab, you can configure optical device users' ability to access or make changes on the device directly. And on the Active Logins tab, you can review and audit trail of user logins on the device. The Internal Patch Cords section lists the patch cords, which are physical or logical connections that connect ports on cards that the chassis contains. When the system performs device discovery, it collects the patch cords that were configured during initial device installation in order for the device to work properly and lists them in internal patch cords. When other system users have configured patch cords, they appear in the list also. It is important to note that to provision OCHCC services successfully, the related patch cords must be provisioned and available in EPN Manager before provisioning begins. Without this configuration, the optical channel service provisioning will fail. Also, to represent bidirectional links, you must indicate a patch cord for each direction. To see the patch cord in the chassis, you can select a patch cord entry. The chassis view layout indicates the cable connectivity and traffic direction. Under GMPLS WSUN, you can indicate the physical characteristics of fiber optic cables and transmission transponders on the optical device. When a system user imports a CTP network design file to the optical device, the system populates the characteristics from the file automatically. You can make changes to them as needed. When you configure physical characteristics, the system stores the information on the optical device. Then, the device can adapt to 
incoming transmissions based on those characteristics. On the Fiber Attributes tab, you can indicate the fiber optic cable attributes, including its type and length, and various factors that can affect optical transmissions when traversing the cable. On the Alien Wavelengths tab, you can indicate the transmitter characteristics of external transponders that are connecting to the device's source and destination ports. It is important to note that, in order for the optical device to recognize the information or signal that the third-party device is sending, the source and destination ports on both the optical device and the connected device must be configured manually. For detailed information on all of the Optical Device Configuration Settings Refer to the Configuring Optical Devices by using the Chassis View Job Aid